back. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has resolved to handle with care the issue of racial disparities in property ownership in the country. This comes after a vote on expro expropriation without compensation by Parliament was sponsored by the radical opposition Economic Freedom Fighters EFF party. The ruling African National Congress ANC has long promised reforms to address racial disparities in land ownership and the subject remains highly emotive more than two decades after the end of apartheid. President Ramaphosa, who is seen as a business-friendly leader, has promised to initiate talks with key stakeholders and move the country forward. And Zimbabwe's President Emerson Manangangwa says a long list of loot has been returned to the country. In November, the Zimbabwe Defence Forces gave a three-month deadline for people in possession of government funds to return them. While well, President Emerson Manangangwa says he is happy with the results following the order, and that the final figure will be announced when it had all been collated. He warns that disciplinary actions would be taken against those who have missed the deadline, which was yesterday. Staying in Zimbabwe, on March the 6th, President Emerson Managawa will mark 100 days in office, while he rose to part in November last year following a de facto military coup, which saw Robert Mugabe reluctantly cede power. Months into his tenure, his administration is struggling to address the economic challenges facing the country. 75-year-old Mangagwa is under pressure to deliver on the economy and show that he's breaking away from the policies of Mugabe, whose 37-year rule since independence in 1980 turned a promising country into an economic basket case and international pariah. He has promised that the country will soon hold elections for the presidency, parliament and local government and has told business leaders that their investments will be secure and their profits safe. It's just a few months into his office and ordinary citizens like Fungai Chirwa, who runs a currency changing business on the streets of Harare, say they are yet to see the country's economy improve. The new government that took over uh, from Gabi, they, they promised that they were going to create uh, jobs, but now there's nothing. And for the past three, for the past hundred days that they, they promised to give us jobs, nothing has happened. And the economy is still deteriorating anyway, I would say, because there's no change at the moment. So I think uh, we need new people in this new government. Under Mugabe, the economy suffered acute shortages of cash dollars, increases in price of basic goods, high unemployment and low levels of foreign investment, making it the biggest challenge for Mangagwa. We've seen a few good developments. Children below five years and adults above 60 years are now getting free medical services. We have also seen a few roads being resurfaced. The government has asked Zimbabweans to be patient and let them work in the meantime. Former Zimbabwe Finance Minister Tendai Betty, who earned international respect during his time as a finance minister in 2009 to 2013 unity government that stabilized the country's imploding economy, says Mangagwa's government is yet to come up with policies that favor Zimbabweans. Well, of course, uh, you, you don't build Rome within 100 days. Uh, but within 100 days, you should be able to set a foundation uh, for a clear strategy uh, of uh, turning around the economy, resuscitating the economy, rebuilding the economy. And regrettably, with uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, he has failed and failed absolutely uh, to set and put a fingerprint, a footprint uh, in, the, in the economy. And part of his problem was that he actually did not have a plan. He actually did not have a strategy. <laughs> Nangagwa's rise to the presidency was the culmination of a past struggle between him and former First Lady Grace Mugabe, who was being groomed by her husband as his potential successor. An Egyptian teenager, Mansur Hamada, has devised a prototype using an improvised robotic exoskeleton, which he says can one day help the disabled walk. The suit is meant to translate the occupant's brain signals into movements of the affected limbs using certain brain sensors. Let's take a look. Global manufacturers of robotic exoskeletons largely target paralyzed people. Although they do not claim to be the cure, 
They believe exoskeletons can be a practical aid to making disabled people more mobile. Exoskeleton originally means a protective or supportive shell. More recently, it has come to mean an outer frame that not only supports but also robotically stimulates or enhances body movement. This Egyptian high school student believes the device could potentially be among the first of its kind in Egypt. The robot is operated by something called brain-computer interface using brain signals, meaning that I think of the movement and the robot translates this into an action. These brain sensors use what is referred to as EEG, and the robot was designed first and foremost to help people with disabilities. Mr. Mansour says his device was designed for people with disabilities, including those suffering from quadriplegia and paraplegia, both injuries affecting the spinal cord. When I went to Zagazig University to present my idea to the professors, they didn't believe that the robot will work with brain sensors. But when they reviewed my research, they confirmed that what I told them was correct. And they were amazed and astounded that someone like me, who is still a high school student, could invent something like this, which isn't available in Egypt. The 18-year-old high school student says he concluded extensive research at physical therapy centers, consulted with brain surgeons, and studied mechatronics before starting his design. Plans are in place to test the device on a disabled person next month, while professors at the Zagazig University have tested the mechanics and approved it for trial. Remarkable. Well, that's Network Africa at this time. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.